Brake bleeding is essential for maintaining optimal brake performance and ensuring the safety of a vehicle. Bleeding the brakes is a procedure that's performed to remove air from the system when a component is replaced, and one that's performed strictly from a maintenance standpoint of flushing or changing the brake fluid of a vehicle. The idea and basic process is generally understood. All of the air must be out for the brakes to work properly. Air compresses and fluid does not, so even the tiniest amount will affect brake operation. Bleeder screws at each wheel allow the air to be forced through and out. It's a simple concept, but it's not without the occasional headache. The key is that not every system responds the same. There are a few different methods to bleed the brakes, and it pays to be familiar with all of them. At minimum, brake fluid should be replaced every two years. The older it gets, the more moisture it absorbs, the worse it performs, and the more corrosive it gets, slowly eating away at the expensive internal components of a brake system. The first thing to always do with any type of brake work is check all the bleeder screws and make sure they open. After opening the bleeder screws, it's important to take the additional step of removing and cleaning them. Brake cleaner should be sprayed into one end to make sure they aren't plugged up with dirt or rust. Your customer should always wear safety glasses for this type of job, so be sure to ask if they have a pair. Another sales opportunity is a drain pan to catch the brake fluid as it drips out of the caliper or wheel cylinder. Bleeder screws are located at the high point of a brake caliper, but it's possible to install some calipers on the wrong side. This is a very common mistake, and when it happens, the bleeder screws will be on the bottom. Your customers should keep in mind it's impossible to bleed the system like this. For most people, their first experience bleeding a brake begins as the assistant. You pump the brake pedal a few times and hold it. Then the person doing the work opens a bleeder screw. When the pedal reaches the floor, you report, on the floor. The bleeder screw is then closed and the process repeated until all air is forced from the system. To properly perform the procedure, start at the bleeder located furthest from the master cylinder and then finish with the bleeder closest. Often referred to as manual bleeding, this method has been the standard procedure for many years. It works well most of the time and requires no special equipment. The drawbacks are that it can be time consuming and requires an assistant, which your DIY customers don't always have. In part two of this two-part series, we'll talk about gravity bleeding, pressure bleeding, and a few other tips. Thanks for watching.